Hey everybody, so I decided to get over my shyness so I can start vlogging. That was one of my uh, New Year's Eve resolution for 2015 because a lot of things went down in 2014 that I did not anticipate. But <clears throat> I wanted to make this video most of all for my freaks, geeks, dorks, nerds, and everyone in between who celebrates individuality and can have an objective perspective <laughs> but also in the muck of things I know a lot of you are curious about tight lacing or corsetry or maybe you're just concerned about a few things when it in regards to corsetry because you know somebody who's corset training and you just want to get the real story like what's really going on and I'm going to definitely clear that up and I'm going to give you the links to people that I think are completely fantastic and will give you exactly what you need and what you're looking for, the right information. Um, and also I just wanted to take this time to just clear up a few things that have been kind of bugging me. And the biggest topic and the biggest discussion is my health. And in all, in the interviews that I have done, I've discussed my health but they leave out the parts that make me seem less shocking and less of a freak show. I actually declined lots of interviews and lots of uh, TV shows because they wanted to continue this destructive narrative that they've created about corsetry and I didn't think that was fair to my tight lacing community, um, my kink community and just anyone who's curious about corsets that they're not interested in informing you, they're interested in shocking you. Because if they shock you, then you'll share the story and it becomes viral and they get more traffic and more sponsors, I don't know, whatever. I want you guys to know that I'm five feet tall. Or as my friends begrudgingly let me know, that I'm actually 4'11 and 3 fourths of an inch. So that makes a huge difference when it comes to tight lacing or course, uh, excuse me, waist training. Because I have a small frame to begin with. Uh, that's one thing I really do want to clear up. Uh, I am healthy. When I first started tight lacing, I was healthy, and I am healthy now. And rather than go into a tangent about in detail, I will give you links, and I always see YouTubers do this. The links are here, 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 whatever. I will put them up from uh, Lucy from Lucy's Corsetry. We love her and Cora from The Laundry Attic. They both have amazing articles that give you the right information and really answer a lot of the questions that you guys might have. If you want to wear a corset, whether it's for vanity, art, a fetish, or you just feel like it, that's completely okay. And that's com completely within your rights. But um, I just want you to have the right information so you can tight lace or waist train or wear corsets safely and confidently. Another thing I really want to clear up is just I want you to understand that I am not seeking perfection. I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think I'll ever be perfect because perfection is an illusion. Beauty is completely subjective. To one person I'm really really effing gross and to another person they think I'm cool. And for the record, my mom thinks I'm cool, so that's something, right? Yeah? No? Okay. So, <laughs> and for the record, I will not apologize for loving Jessica Rabbit. I fucking love her. I do. I absolutely love her. And what's so funny is that her tagline, I'm not bad, I'm drawn that way, it just like... She's not bad, but everyone is so shitty to her throughout the whole thing. Anyways, I'm not going to apologize for liking Jessica Rabbit. I do love her. She was an inspiration to me, but in the sense where I've always loved the idea that reality and cartoons can exist in the same world, like, that's kind of awesome. I know that's not possible, but if you look at, like, my wardrobe, it's kind of on the cartoony side, guys. Like, it's not not a very um everyday kind of wardrobe so I wasn't just as so it's so funny when people are like you look nothing like her your hair is blue it's not even red it's like I don't think you guys understand what inspiration means <laughs> it doesn't mean that I want to be her doppelganger 
But she wasn't my only inspiration. I have so many. Diane Vreeland, Grace Coddington, um, Hollywood from Cool World, uh, <laughs> another cartoon character, Storm, and McQueen, Mr. Pearl, Diane Mugler, Jean-Paul Gaultier, like, these people inspired me. These characters inspired me because they just like made my imagination run wild and just I I love that. I I love it. I I love people who are unapologetic. Like I live. I just live. Like I love the women of advanced style. I think I can't wait to be like 80 and just like not giving a fuck like Iris. Iris is iconic and she's one of my inspirations. It learned to me that if I ever gained some sort of notoriety, I wanted to empower people who were different. I wanted to empower women. And by no means is my tight lacing or my aesthetic a stance on beauty in the sense where I think this is perfect where I think this is the way everyone should look. This, it, it's just complete nonsense. I would never feel that way, ever. I think whatever makes you happy, whatever your personality is externalized, I think that's fantastic and that should be celebrated. As I've said before, I celebrate the woman who gets giddy over the new lipstick that MAC is gonna have out, and I celebrate the woman who loves to be completely natural. It's no one is better than the other we're just different and i'm really tired of women being pinned against each other it's always who's better than who who has a smaller waist who has no that i'm not about that this really was a personal choice and it was by no means me saying women have to look like this like women should look however the fuck they want to look is my opinion on that and will always be my opinion on that because we're all different we're what I hate is that our bodies become these trends. It's never the year of the butt, the year of the waist, the year it's, but it dismisses and erases other women. So there are women who are slender who feel erased because now it's about curvy. And then when it was about slender women, about the slender, excuse me, about the slender figure, then curvy women were erased. And it's like, how about we all exist? <laughs> We all exist. Some of us are tall, some of us are short, some of us are slender, some of us are more voluptuous, some of us are curvy, some of us are not. Like, but no one is better than the other. We're all fing awesome. Like, we're all fing awesome. I am so vocal about women who are different shapes, different sizes, different race. Like, we don't have this kind of variety in the, the media at all. And I've said this so many times in. in the few interviews that I've done, I've said this. No one mentions it, ever, because why would they? It. <laughs> I have the receipts, as they would say. I also want this to be a moment where I try not to be like sad about it, <laughs> but when this whole thing went viral, it just was really heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking in the sense that I trusted I trusted a production company that I thought shared my vision. This video was supposed to be uh this video was supposed to be a love letter to designers, body modifiers, uh, fetish models and just like my community to just say thank you for helping me realize who I am. And you know, it's it's all love kind of thing. But instead, this production company decided to reduce it to a freak show vanity piece. And that was really heartbreaking. It, it really was. And uh, the reason why it upset me so much is because I've always been a strange kid. I've always been strange. I've always been not like everybody else and I know what it's like not to feel like you can re you <laughs> not being able to relate to other people and I always said that if I did gain some sort of notoriety I wanted to let people know that it's okay to be different 
and it's cool to be different. You are what makes this world amazing and colorful and loud and you are the reason why people question things and are inquisitive like this is it's important you're important and never apologize for your existence never never do that if someone is telling you that you are shining too brightly then tell those f to wear some shades and shine on seriously that's what i wanted you guys to know this i i, I know my tight lacing is weird I know I look strange. I totally, trust me, I don't look in the mirror and think I look normal or I can pass for normal. I would never think that. But that's okay. It's completely okay. It was a conscious decision to have blue hair and get piercings and tattoos. And, and if we're going to judge people on what they look like and berate them for what they look like, we're no better. Like... Just remember, words don't define other people. They define you. And I'm totally okay with people calling me gross and disgusting and too much. That's completely cool. It's whatever. Because it doesn't reflect on me. It reflects on you. I, I want you to know that the fan mail that you guys have sent me, and it was so cool, like, getting it in... In the middle of the chaos of just feeling like a bigger freak than you ever felt before, it meant a lot to me. And you guys are my family. And um, I feel very lucky and very grateful that there are people who want to take part in my journey and want to get to know me. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's the first of many more to come. And until then, keep it weird. Choose love always. Mwah.